So right. that was my idea. So that's what I would like to find no, that's, something yeah. to do. But, but that's me, what I would, me, I'm I, sure I, you I, will, I, Phil. I'm sure it'll be a funny bit of business, <laughs> maybe clicking the pen in the mouth. <laughs> people, people still talk about that. They still talk about that. Three years later. I thought that when I saw him for the first time in Scent of a Woman, that I, that I just knew what true love was. I knew what love at first sight was. And it was the strangest feeling sitting in a movie theater thinking, uh, he's for me and I'm for him. You know, and that was it. Whoever this guy is, I got to have him. I got to see him. I got to know him. He's, I just I got to have this guy. You know, it's such an incredible performance. I said, well, I'd like to be the kind of writer and director that, 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 that gives actors sort of an opportunity to do something they haven't done before. But I was essentially you knew I was calling Philip Hoffman up to do something that he'd done a version of before, but I didn't feel bad about it because I thought, we'll make it the best version. No, it's funny because every part you play, there's a genre. You know, that's what I found out is that every part you play, somebody's played that type of role 10 million times before. And that's kind of the job is, is uh, what new light do you want to shine on that part or that story? We were all just really blown away by him and just fell in love with him and we were so excited, you know, to have him, you know. And um, we, we had really quite a good time. That's why I wrote Scotty for him, you know. But the first day that I met Phil Hoffman in person was the day that we shot the scene. Let me show you exactly how Phil will do it. routine. It'll go like this. It'll be like, some the, charm, thing that you've some the thing that you've decided to do is that he's going to walk over to the cigar box and you know the little leather case there and he's just gonna go like that with it and here's here's how it'll go when Phil does it. Watch this. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to see I'm sorry, Frank. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that was my Phil Hoffman impersonation. That was pretty good, actually. That was good, Frank. Are you and Paul going to work again? Do you have any plans to work again? Oh, we'll definitely work again. Yeah. He's like, you can't refuse. You can't. What he say? You can never reject me. He said something like that. <laughs> You can never turn me down, that's what he said. Yeah, no, we'll definitely work again. I mean, but it, it, with Paul, it doesn't matter. It's like, you know, if he does, he does, he doesn't, he doesn't, you know. I just, you know, uh, my, it's not, I'm not hanging out with Paul because he's Paul. You know, I'm not hanging out with Paul because he's this great film director. Uh, Paul's not hanging out with me because he respects his actor. You know, we met that way, but we're not hanging out with each other anymore because of that. It's like, I, ho I hope and will work with him again. I definitely will, but we, our friendship is close first. It felt so good when we were making it, you know? Like, we were having so much fun, and, uh, and it really felt nice. It really did. And um, John Riley and Phil Hoffman and Philip Baker Hall and uh, uh, Bob Ridgely, a lot of the actors in the movie, are, are, are real good friends of mine. And it's great to, to, to um, write parts for them because, you, you know, they're my friends, and I watch them kind of suffer in Hollywood, you know, not being uh, able to play parts that they should, you know, if, they, if, they're, if they're good at playing the white trash hillbilly, they get the white trash hillbilly parts, you right. know, forever, and I can, go, I can go to them and say, so what, do you, what kind of part do you want to play, you know, and they say, well, I want to do something other than the stuff they're offering me, you know, so it's nice to, to do that. You know, Julianne Moore is someone whose work I just loved, you know, and I, I wrote this part for her, but I didn't know her. But um, it was great to give it to her and say, this is for you, you know, and she said, yeah. And do things, and, and I just wanted you to know how much I care about you. I really care about you, honey. You're my little baby. I mean, I think there was something that I was upfront with um, the actors about, and maybe, you know, uh, was, was my confusion about the issue and, and, and saying that, that, that there's, a, there's a version of this movie that is confused and that, ha and that has to be okay and that I don't, you know. I support this as much as it really kind of turns me off, and I'm confused about it. And 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 we have points to make, you know, within this movie that we can put a period at the end of. But it's okay to be elliptical about something if we are confused, you know. Can't tell you how much fun we had doing that film, all of us. Um, and then I just do all the internal work, which I always do, which is, you know, what's it like to just, you know, what's, 
what's it like to obsess about somebody? You know, what's it like to want somebody so bad? What's it like to go through the day and not be able to think about anything else but this one person? You know, and, uh, and it, you just go from there and, and uh, see what happens. I'm proud of the choices we made there. And Paul was really, was really helpful all the whole way through. He was cautious at first when I brought in what I did. And then, and then we just nurtured it together. And we both remember after shooting it and seeing it, I remember going to him and saying, thank you for letting me do what I did. And I think we, we did, we did right by this part you wrote. Wait, 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 fuck hell, how much time is that? I'm sorry, What sir, the hell please. is the matter with I'm you? I'm sorry, I, uh... Why did you do that, Scotty? Uh, you look at me sometimes. What? I want to know if you like me. Pretty lonely sometimes, and I know that I can sometimes, and so I go and write a movie <laughs> so that I can be around people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't tape this. <laughs> this is a study in ham and cheese and how you corral. <laughs> yeah, you could light a fire, Phil. Oh, so you cut to me, I'm like, I, I'll so like I'm dropping shit on the floor. <laughs> oh, uh, you can oh, go believe into me, Phil. I think it's about the relationship that I have to the actor, you know, because most of us are friends, and th there's 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 just this, this, this accident that's happened, or whatever it is, I don't know, that they trust me. Me, you know, and I trust them. So, uh, it, and what that means is, um, we don't second guess uh, what we're doing. It just becomes, um, it just becomes. And I think Paul does. Uh, Paul's films deal a lot with that. Yeah, I, I, you know, with, with not being content with just being, you know, and and that it's a struggle to just be. But how impossible that is because mm -hmm. of all the things we're talking about right now. And he'll overload his films in a way with it, where it's just a guy. I think that's Paul. I think he's an overloaded individual. It makes him such an amazing person. It's just, <laughs> what's happening in his head is way too much for any person to bear. And you kind of see him and you get to know him like that. And you see his films do that too. But it is in search of how can I just be? Right. You know? I think it's like, you know, it's reading a great book too. I mean, any great, any great novel that I can think of is actually drawing a character or a narrative in such a way that is so brutally honest in a way that you thought, oh God, I never would have put it that way, but that's it. Do you mm -hmm. know, when you're living your life and all of a sudden you come across it in a book in such a way that you're relieved that somebody actually got it down on paper and you're, and you're grateful because it is that awful or that brutal or, and I always say, it's uh, therefore that memorable, and that's why mm -hmm. it's in a book. It's an amazing thing to, um, be, I'm such a fan of his since I saw The Scent of a Woman, which is so yeah, long ago, right. and I sought him out, and I wanted, he was in my very first movie, and then he was in Boogie Nights, and, and it's just amazing to watch someone who you, you, you were rooting for get to the point where you can now go to a studio and say, Philip Seymour Hoffman and is they in know. my movie, and, oh, and they know, you don't have to say, the guy from, you know, the sidekick friend, from, they know his name. And it's so great to me. And, it's, and he's an actor who deserves it too, who's worked his ass off for a long time, been around yeah. for a long time working really hard. It's just the sweetest And, and the guy. talent is just, you just see it. It just comes out of every scene. For real, yeah. every act. That was a great thing too about Tom too, is that Tom, Tom was interested, yeah, in being in the movie and working with me and that's great. But he knew Phil Hoffman was going to be in his scenes, you know, and that was an exciting, that was a draw for Tom Cruise. I'm going to get to act with Phil <laughs> oh Hoffman. Oh, God, you fucking asshole, don't go away, you fucking asshole, don't go away, you fucking asshole. Oh, God, don't go away, you fucking asshole. And people that are in my, my, uh, my peer group, you know, that I, I respect, I get to work with them, you know, and, and, uh, well, what more could a person ask for? What more could a person ask for, you know? The challenge is all there. Someone's saying, you know, uh, did you, how do you get these performances? And I think that my first job is to be a really good writer to the, to the actors. Um, you know, I, n to not describe it in, in the script. So, much, so many times you see so much description of what the character is supposed to be feeling and stuff in, in screenplays. And it's just a big mistake. It has to be done through dialogue and, and, and what they do. What are they going to? Are they going to walk across the street? You know, then that is a, that that's a character trait. You know, they're making that decision, and so the, the the scripts that I write for them are very clean. They're sort of very clean of a lot of sort of flowery explanation of what they're supposed to be feeling. I think the actors really appreciate that. It it lets them do their job and enables them to just act. And we never talked about any of this. I mean, what I'm saying right now, this is all just obviously in Paul allowing very deep 
complicated questions to make to, to make themselves known through strong narrative, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens with a, with a very bright mind, you know, is that things will come out of that strong narrative that won't necessarily be named. Hey, this is Dean Trumbull for The Mattress Man. Give me a call at 370-0466. For limited time only, d d Mattress has queen mattress sets for $99 and king set for $129. Shit, man, you okay? Yeah, uh, I was afraid that was gonna happen. Uh, I was afraid it was gonna happen with that goddamn thing. You know, alright, he's wearing, he's wearing leather. Fucked okay. up my guitar, though. Did you get it on film? Well, I know he's my friend, but I have to say there's just nothing he can't, can't do. I, I just, I feel so lucky to have met Phil and hooked up with him, you know. I'm, I can't remember, you know, growing up, all I wanted to do was make films. You sort of imagine yourself on the set making movies with, a, you know, a camera and lights and... You sort of imagine as a kid you're going to be sort of, I don't know, making westerns outside. Never in my fantasy did I see anybody that looked like Phil Hoffman being a part of that picture. But here we are, and somewhere along the way I found this actor who I just think can do anything and I, is capable of so much that you can throw anything at him. One of the things he does in the film is blush. And the, <laughs> it's, it's so interesting when he blushes. Like He, he plays a character who's obviously a kind of narcissistic character. He kind of loves himself and believes in himself. And there's times when he's blushing, when he's talking to his followers in this cult, where it, it's almost like he's thinking to himself, gosh, it's just so embarrassing to be this wise and this sensitive. <laughs> and I don't know, as an actor, like, how do you control when you blush? I don't, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> yeah, you know... I don't know if you can, but I wouldn't put it past Phil for being able to control when he can blush. You know, whether he can blush or not is really just, the, I think, what you said more more directly, is sort of that kind of great thing that he, this character does. His kind of joy in his intelligence, his joy in discovery, his, his humility, I think Phil's playing that. Somebody who's so good with words, who loves words, you know, who absolutely never met a word that he didn't like or couldn't use or kind of flip it around like a pancake. I will relate it to the master in a way, too, because the master is the kind of character that people go in judging already from the get-go. Yeah. Oh, this is a guy that's based on this. It's a, you know, head of a cult. He's there, all these mm -hmm. things. And, and, and so, like, it's dangerous to kind of go too ugly because it's going to be too easy for somebody to go, see, there it is. There's the... There's mm -hmm. the crazy cult guy, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and I remember thinking that, so I had to really earn it, you know what I mean? I had to earn it, so when it happened, it had to mean something, and, I, and so there's moments that happens, but the one moment in particular is when I call that guy a cunt. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't remember that guy at the, the party, you know, when he starts, but that uh, guy is, that yeah. guy is, he is. Yeah. No, and I, and I mean it. Think about it. Think about if you're at if you're at some place. It's just a new you're party. You're talking about something you spent your whole life on, and you think. And, and, you're, and you're carrying it around like as if I let go of this, that mm -hmm. this is my, this is, this is, this is my, my, my living yeah. after I die thing that I'm carrying around with me. And some guy who I don't even know, who doesn't know me, reads some stuff, comes into a party, and starts to dismantle it in front of other people. If it, if it was something like that, you would start to feel that enraged too, because you would think, why, oh, why, oh, why would you do this? To me. Mm -hmm. I would. And I remember thinking that, like, so you put it into a character like that, and all of a sudden it allows, it allows to, you know, for somebody to either go, ah, there's the crazy cult guy, or for somebody to go, I know him. Right. I know him. I know yeah. him. Why would mm -hmm. I ever think that way about him? Why did I have that thought about him before I came into this movie? Mm -hmm. Why would I think that I'm different from that guy? I, I know I am, but why would I think I'm so different in the human race? And that's what I'm talking about, is if I don't allow people to somehow identify with the worst inside themselves, they never have a chance at actually walking out with that person in their heart, you know, mm -hmm. or in their minds, you know what I mean? They're too easy to dismiss. Mm -hmm. It's like, it might not be the thing to admit to a friend, you know what I mean? Or admit to anybody afterwards, like, well, that Lancaster Dodd, when he freaked out, I kind of understood that. That's right. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's like, but if you're honest, you kind of probably do. Mm -hmm. You know, I do. And I know, I mean, I know I can't be that wildly different from everyone in this room, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, it's like, and I identify with a lot of things I've done in the movies, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It doesn't mean I've literally done them, it's I identify with them. I think because we've spent so much time sort of being drunk 
in front of each other and at parties and at family gatherings and these sorts of things that everything that a camera isn't exactly rolling a lot of the times or it doesn't matter that the camera's there. I remember when Paul fell in love, Paul fell in love with this woman once and I was probably in my 20s and he came to visit me and I was on West 4th. I lived on West 4th and uh, Jane and I lived right across from <clears> the corner bistro there, you know. Now there's a chocolate place, but it used to be a deli and I lived right above that. And it was just crappy, like a little one bedroom, but it was perfect and wonderful. And, uh, and he fell in love and he came to visit me. We went across the street to the Jane Street Tavern. Mm -hmm. and, and it was the middle of the day and he was with the girl he was in love with. He just fallen. And I remember he was so happy that he started tackling me. And, <laughs> and, 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 we, and, and we were, and we do this, we've done this 50 times in our relationship. But, but he was, he, he, we were beating on each other so fiercely. Because uh, he was so happy, and I, he was happy, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and he was and he was beating on me, and I was, and I'm stronger than he is, you know, I'm a thick guy, you know, and he's a little taller, <laughs> but I, I can kind of, but he's so he's so d determined, and we almost got kicked out of there. It was three, right. it was three right. o'clock in the afternoon, we hadn't had a drink, and, he, and it was so few tables were turning over, and that's not even an exaggeration. <laughs> And that's the, and I remember when we were shooting that, I remember him saying something at the age, he's like, why'd you go and like, mm -hmm. you know, don't tell him. And, but I knew exactly what he meant from right. our history, you know, which is such a beautiful thing in art that you have this history that doesn't have to be named and it's something, and it kind of works. It's so I watched that and I'm, it's me and Paul, you know, and it's Paul being in love. And so that's that moment. Yeah. It's like, I'm in love, he's in love, and now we're going to play around on the ground. You know, and it, has, and it has nothing to right. do with wanting to have sex or anything. It has to mm -hmm. do with love, you know, and, yeah. and in that moment there is happiness for both of them. I have so much strength in me, you have no idea. I have a love in my life. It makes me stronger than anything you can imagine. I would say that's that, Mattress Man. And my, my, my mom's name is Marilyn O'Connor, and she's here tonight. And uh, I'd like, if you see her tonight, to congratulate her. Uh, because uh, she brought up four kids alone, and, uh, and she deserves a congratulations for that. And... Um, <laughs> ah, we're at the party, Ma, you know? Um, and uh, she took me to my first play, and she stayed up with me and watched the NCAA uh, Final Four. And uh, my passions, her passions became my passions. And, uh, you know, be proud, Mom, because I'm proud of you. And we're here tonight, and <laughs> it's so good. Thank you. He was the most extraordinary friend to so many people. Um, and his influence, I think, has, um, I mean, time will tell just how deep it was, and I mean, if I could be half the actor he, he, um, he was in his unfortunately short life, I'd be very happy. He was a dear friend, he was a good guy, he was a beautiful guy, he had a real insatiable kind of appetite for acting and anything. He was always, um, he was very wise and very uh, powerful. He had, a, he had a real emotional power, you know, that was... That he was, was a terrific actor. Yeah, he was arresting. I mean, he really would would he would grab. He would just. He was an amazing actor and an amazing person, and kind of a a mentor to a lot of actors like myself. You know, two of the great talents of my life, two of the biggest influences on me, Robin Williams and and Philip Seymour Hoffman, both passed away last year, right? I mean, these are very very serious artists, and um, they're not celebrities to me, you know, Philip was the first one of my generation to be a fully actualized actor artist, you know mm -hmm. he, he had something to say with his work, with his theater company with the choices he made with the way he carried himself in the world you know, he was a very serious person, I mean, it didn't come for free you know, I, I worked with Philip Seymour Hoffman, it didn't come for free I saw him in um, Death of a Salesman you know, it didn't come for free. I fucked up. Can you forgive me? Yeah, it's all right.
Don't judge these people. You can't have relationships if you're not willing to be disappointed and hurt by that person. It's almost impossible. If you say yes to someone, I will, you are also saying, I will be hurt by you. And they have to be able to enter into the world and realize that the richness of life is all the good and joy and thrill of it, but also all the disappointment, hurt, and heartache of it. And that all of that is what's great. People need each other. That actual interaction or relationship or friendship or romantic love affair, all the different ways relationships take form, is one of the hardest things we do in our lives. One of the biggest risks we'll take in our lives. And let's see what happens. I think I should be packing up the you shit should, on the you tables should be, or something. You should be doing some kind of small, 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 silly work, you know. <laughs>